Hotline League is brought to you by Open by HP. Hit me with that heat. Get me with that fire. Come on, callers. Mark. Mark did grab some. You didn't even go to yeah, the other channel to grab them. Wait, well, yeah, I did. You just didn't look. Oh. <laughs> OPTSM fan is in the chat. OPTSM fan, where are you calling from? Uh, Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Yeah, Another Texas person. Texans. Texan, uh, Texas after Texas. Wait, here's um, a question. Before he starts, do you drink your milk with ice in it? Me? Yeah. Oh no, God, the other, no. the other Texan. Okay. <laughs> that I sounds that so was, bad. That, see, I, my, I grew up with a family of Texans right next to me, and I thought it was the weirdest thing. They would all have ice in their milk, but they explained it was because it was so fucking hot in Texas that they would have to put ice in it because they'd rather have watery milk than drink warm milk by the sun. What? No, no. I was just clarifying if they were crazy or if it was all Texans. Thank you for I, answering. You know, that might just be a small town Texas thing where they may not be able to like have like good refrigerators or something like that. But I don't. I, I actually have no idea. That's the first time I've ever heard of that. Why don't you just not buy milk if that's a problem? Like, <laughs> there's other things you can have for breakfast or whatever. You don't need the milk. It's gonna be warm 100% of the time. Can to we... this day, because of it, I drink milk with ice in it. Can we get into the? Oh, you do that? Well, yeah, because I grew up with them. Uh, can we? Okay. I'm ready for your question now. Can we, can we get into the? Can we get into the show. Okay. OPTSM yeah. fan, thanks for being a sub. What do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, I wanted to present this uh, idea because uh, I've been watching a lot of LPL this past season because I bought into the IG hype train uh, mainly because like, you know, I've always heard about rookie, 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 and then I was just watching him. I was like, he's playing Lucian mid when he's doing this and it's just dominating on it. But my main point is that I think NA should stop trying to copy Korea and needs to copy the LPL in terms of macro because I feel like their solo queue environment kind of cultivates more of a air quote fiesta style that we kind of paint the LPL with the big brush about and trying to practice this uh, Korean style of like calculated, you know, loss reduction style doesn't really fit in a solo queue before before frost gets into that i want to i'm curious mark does do you think na just copies lck because i've seen this many times before where people all say like na loses because they're just trying to top, copy korea but i've never like i've never heard a team or a player or anybody like that be like well we were just trying to do that lck stuff um and so i'm just kind of curious about that part of his premise um I think Korea is the most emulated region in the world, uh, most likely, but I don't feel like people are just copying Korea blindly for the most part. Like, I think people, like when Hecarim Top became a thing, you know, it was done in Korea on whoever No Phase team was who's coaching them. It started in China. They started in China then? Well, so that's exactly proves my point. <laughs> I didn't know it came from China. <laughs> It came from Korea, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but that uh, one fucking... <laughs> That's kind of to my point, though. Like, everyone yeah, yeah. just assumes that the meta starts in, in Korea, and they want to copy that. Well, Double I don't, Tier I don't... also started in China. Yeah, so I didn't... Double Tier, I didn't touch. But, like, that was all over Reddit, I know. Um, but, like, other regions have done things, too. Like, famously in Season 3, Kassadin was, like, played all the time by Europe, and Korea was like, haha, Kassadin sucks balls, what are you doing? And then they lost to it, and then it went on to become 90% pick ban rate for all of Season 4, if I get the timeline right. Maybe it was Season 2 into Season 3. I forget, but either way, like, I'm not saying everyone copies Korea, but, like, if Korea is doing it, it's probably decent, and that's why and people just watch a lot of Korea. But I don't think people blindly follow Korea in that sense. So what I was going to say with that Hecarim story was, like, it happened a little bit in Korea. There was, like, one team or two teams that did it, and then gravity brought it over to north america and they were the first team to start doing it over here and we actually beat a bunch of people who shout were playing out to it cop. a little uh actually shout out to ls ah. cop was not coaching them at the time i'm pretty sure um was he not competing oh no yeah right he might have been i don't know if all tech was was playing yet or not either way the point is we played against it we beat it we didn't think it was that great we, we played it the first 
the first time they brought it out in competition, we beat it with like Ken in top building Iceborne Gauntlet or something right away. So Ken, like, I don't know. So we weren't impressed, but then as we scrimmed against it more, we were like, oh, this actually is really good. And then Hecarim top was like super meta for a really long time. Um, and so I guess where I'm going with this story is like, no one blindly like copies Korea. Like, oh, this, they played this thing. I play this thing now. Like it, it does usually go through like a, a pretty, I don't know if vetting process is the right term, but like people do try things for themselves. And sometimes they don't, agree that like oh yeah korea is doing it but i don't really like it it's just smeb doing smeb shit or like baker's playing aurelia mid no one copied that shit uh before it got reworked now everyone's playing it okay so I taking know. optsm fans statement um and making it sort of it, rather than drawing in so much inspiration from lck should they be drawing inspiration from lpl uh i mean i assume frost going to say yes because no. it's lpl yeah. Absolutely we do the not. crazy shit. It's the best. Uh, I also think that there's an issue where, yes, I do think a lot of teams do look at the best region in the world, LCK, and they're trying to study or break down what they're doing. I know that some coaches have gone so far as to uh, create presentations for their teams about certain macro rotations or like a composition or something like that. But I do not think it is as intensive study as the community might believe. Um, and I also don't believe, and this is probably a bit of a flame, I do not believe that people also understand why Koreans do the things that they do um, or why the LPL does the things that they do. Like in talking with Western analysts uh, versus like Eastern analysts, like Papa Smithy and I view the game almost completely different than someone like uh, Deficio or Jat. And there are a lot of times when we will like cross and, and agree on things, but your region uh, really does leave kind of like a fingerprint on you. And it's so hard to say like, when the LPL is defined as a fiesta, it, it does tilt me a little bit because yes, the, the macro strategy isn't as nearly as developed as even you know some of the Western regions and especially not as Korea. Um, but the thing that people really seem to miss about the LPL is the beauty of the team fighting. And why I was always so sure that Fnatic would never be able to beat RNG is because Fnatic relied so heavily on team fighting, but they themselves, at least from me watching uh, their domestic season, their playoffs, and even them at MSI, they, they know how to team fight, so I'm not meaning this is a flame on Fnatic, but comparatively to the LPL teams, they do not understand team fighting. They do not understand where to set up a team fight. They do not understand uh, the perfect way to execute consistently in a team fight in terms of how they're layering their CC, uh, who is responsible for zoning who, who is keeping track of what cooldowns, and that is why they constantly were getting out team fought. Um, and I tried to point this out on the analyst desk, but I wish I, I wish I had taken it to the big screen just to show viewers. Um, specifically for me, it was Fnatic's inability to flank in team fights, and whether that's because of their lack of vision on side lane, so they were constantly getting pincer maneuvered by RNG. But even when Fnatic themselves attempt to pincer, uh, they just aren't as coordinated as they need to be to the LPL teams when when flanking from the side. So um, I feel like when I talk to a lot of Western players, when I talk to a lot of Western teams. Um, which I have a fairly limited scope in my examples with them, so this isn't indicative of everyone. It's more so about like matchups, about early game, about when you have a certain setup and, and your lane assignments. It's not necessarily about the how this composition works in terms of execution in a team fight. Whereas when I talk to a lot of LPL teams, they will sacrifice certain lane matchups. Uh, a very famous one was back when Lucian bot was, was dominating everything, the LPL would pick Twitch into it. And their mentality wasn't that Twitch beat Lucian, it was that Twitch lost to Lucian, so Lucian would be pushed in the lane, which opened him up for a gank. And Twitch's kill pressure with a jungler versus Lucian's kill pressure with a jungler in that 3v3 was, was stronger. So like literally the LPL's mentality is, we think Twitch is a counter to Lucian because he loses the lane and opens up the opportunity for a superior, superior 3v3. Like, how, how ass backwards is that? And you can't say, that, like, that's the best way to play that because that could also go very wrong. But, like, this is how different the regions really think. And so to just say that NA copies Korea, I don't think is right. Like, there are certain things, like Mark is saying, where you see something and you kind of vet it, but it's still fitting within the con uh, constraints of, like, North America's understanding on the meta, which is very different. And I'm not saying, like, superior or inferior, but just different. Okay, like, I guess, first off, I just want to state that like i guess my you know na has left an imprint on me because i don't think it's a fiesta style when it call it. i watch lpl all the time i enjoy it and i it's not only like good for viewership and like fun to watch but because like every game comes down unless it's just a stomp every game comes down to who team fights better and if 
you know, like you're saying from the get go, if that's the way the LPL comps are like designed is for like to have, this is the way our team fight works in a, you know, and when we when we get to that stage and we're not just trying to pick lane matchups that benefit us in the early game and then we can try to move there and rotate and do all these things that other regions do i just think that in, in my opinion i think it's a cultural thing that one would be better for just na as a product like just look on at NALCS and see a lot more fighting as opposed to like when we have like teams going back and forth trading towers and then we get a 23 minute first blood and everyone's like oh finally but i i I don't know. I, after hearing everything you, you say, I can understand why, you know, you wouldn't want to just blindly copy. I don't think anyone blindly copies. There's a lot of really, really smart people in esports. But I think that if we looked more towards the LPL and the way that they address team comps or team fighting and stuff like that, that we would actually see more international success because I think we have the type of players who would benefit from that type of either play style or uh, those comps. Yeah, I, think, I think no you go mark okay i was gonna say i think it, it's it's like it's very important for the players to like accept like committing to a play style or something like that or like understanding what you're trying to do with your practice and making sure that that's all like leading somewhere because if if you're like hey guys we're gonna copy china because we don't think you'll ever get that macro shit down so, you know like i think um i think the, like I think the more important than even, you know, emulating China or emulating Korea is like finding what works for your team and like uh, the natural tendencies for your players and all that stuff is is more important. And if you have a team that's like, all right, listen, guys, we're Echo Fox. We're not going to fucking like, like you said, go 20 minutes, no first bloods. That's not how we play. I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, I think finding what works for you is very important. And like Echo Fox will never be close to like what a Korean team looks like. And I don't think they should be. Um, and so for a team like TS TSM, it's probably not that way. Like Bjergsen likes to play a very controlled style. That's who he is. He he wants that approach. And I don't think you could tell him, ah, just go play more risky, dude. Like go go out there and risk getting ganked and like just try and scrap some 2v2s out mid lane because that's, that's not his natural play style. And so like you would have to get some serious buy-in for him from for him to like want to approach that the game that way. Yeah, I agree. I think that um, people also don't realize how much power the players do have in kind of uh, strategy development, especially in, in champ select. It is, to my experience, very rare that a coach gets the absolute final say on what a draft looks like, even though they get most of the time the, the brunt the end of the stick. Exactly. They always get blamed for shit. But nine times out of ten, I guarantee the coach is like, you should really pick LeBlanc here. And they're like, rise? <laughs> and they just lock it in. <laughs> and then the uh, the NA audience is like, why is this coach continuously picking? Oh my God, this guy sucks. Um, but again, it's you, uh, the, the number one source of a coach's information does come from their players. Like, uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find any coach that knows more about the game um, in a, a, a micro level than a, a player does. So a lot of times when a team's identity is being crafted, it does have to do uh, with the players, with their comfort, with how they think a matchup plays. So, when you Amero, before you go flaming a coach, <laughs> realize this. Amaro in, in Twitch chat says, "Phoenix literally held a gun to my head and made me pick Rise every game." <laughs> you should have yeah. picked him as Zero, dude. Didn't you know he had a good? In Nero, well, you yeah. should pick Ezreal. Jin? Ezreal? No, Jin. Got it. You said well, Siver, right? <laughs> Siver, yeah, Siver. That's right. It's Siver. Yeah. No, okay. Well, that that's basically the crux of my thing. I just think I think I, NA could maybe take from both, and like y'all said, it's definitely for finding what play style works better for you. I personally think more, you know, I hate the word aggression, but more proactive plays. I think the most successful time we thought an NA team was going to do well is when we saw the first iteration of TSM Double Lift with Bob Frost and they were just moving everywhere on the map and it, it didn't look like you were watching a Korean team or LPL team but it just seemed like more proactive plays uh, benefits NA teams and I feel like LPL has that whether it's through their macro or just you know their natural play style as a, as a side note uh, just random question should coaches have like pick and ban on a tablet and they get to actually pick and ban <laughs> they get full control like plugged into when yeah. the player's like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't think it matters. Uh, the Like Frost was saying, the players are still going to, like, not necessarily have final say, but they're going to have a huge input either way. So it's just, like, who's locking it in? Because most of the time, the player's not even picking their own champion. They're picking somebody else's. 
So yeah. I don't think that would matter. I think that'd be yeah. cool. I think, I think <laughs> it would kind of be awkward if like you're like, hey, you should play this. And he's like, I really think this is better. And then you play it for him. And then that's the discussion that you have after a loss. Is like, well, I really think we should have picked this here. And it's well, like, that mm. still happens no matter what. There's also like a, a very hard line. Um, and this is my experience back in the day coaching. I don't know if it's changed as like more resources and professionalism have increased in the scene. But once you lose your player's trust as a coach or as an analyst, you, you're pretty much done though. Like you almost must go to a different team uh, because of just, again, I think a, a big problem was this idea that if you're spending X number of dollars on a roster, the coach, in my experience, back in the day was never the most important part of the roster. Like, take RNG. If you have Uzi and Uzi is like the guy, then are you going to replace the coach first or are you going to replace Uzi first? Even if there's like a huge disagreement there. Yeah. So. Uh, kind of along that, uh, I want to get... Yeah, really quickly, we need to move on to the next call. So Yeah, re really quickly, just like the idea that like of the community's reaction to like people always want North America to have their own play style, but then when they have their own play style and it loses, people love to complain and say like, why are they playing Jin and stuff like that? Like, I don't know if you have a, a particular like opinion on if teams should spend more time trying to read the meta or spend more time just kind of being themselves. Hmm. It's hard to say because I'm not in the conversation. Like, I'll speak directly to the gen point because I think a lot of uh, viewers will grab hold of the gen and be like, why are you playing this garbage-ass champion? Like, why are you giving free wins? But from a player's perspective and everything that I've talked to players about gen, it's simply like a safe laning phase. Uh, and I don't know if Peter's still in the background, if you can, like, correct me here. No, but again, to my understanding and two players talking to me, it was the idea that if I pick the gen, I can either compete with certain pushing power or I would have a safe laning phase. And gen compositions are really interesting, especially when you use them with trundle your ability to create long range picks but the problem is is that the barrier on execution for a gin comp is actually pretty high and we are playing like much faster paced games and so i don't necessarily think that gin meant auto lose or gin was necessarily out of the meta because every team seemed to be playing a very different style have different priority on champions um but just that the, the teams at that high of a level didn't really understand how to protect the gen. Like, Reckless having to play gen into a Camille, I believe, Orn composition, he was never going to be able to do anything there. They were just going to jump on his face and instantly kill him. So from that perspective, if you're then giving Fnatic Flame of, why didn't you have a better read on the meta and take the Ezreal? Well, guess what? Against uh, RNG, he picked Ezreal every single time. And part of that was a denial pick away from Uzi. But if the if the player's more comfortable on Jin than necessarily Ezreal, and Reckless did a good job on Ezreal, and I mean, obviously they they strategically like did that. I feel like so many people look at drafts and they say this guy won draft, this guy lost draft. When for all we know, the coach could be walking away from both drafts saying we got exactly what we wanted. They picked exactly what they thought they were going to pick. And all the community sees are these power picks or these OP picks and like, wow, this team doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't understand how to draft, flame the coach, flame the players. But again, like, you could look at the weaker draft and the team comms and the coach comms are all saying, this is fine. We got exactly what we wanted. They did exactly what we thought that they were going to do. And then it just comes down to execution. I like that point a lot too, just because like, unless you can have two team comps that are like the same thing, but then if you have two different team comps, one will always look like the, the wrong choice based off execution sometimes. Yep. Like, oh man, we don't have much wave clear, but we have three winning lanes. So like if we get ahead, it doesn't matter. And then like, their jungler dies and like some skirmish and they're playing behind the whole game and it's like well yeah your comp didn't do what it was supposed to do so look bad so yeah i big agree like how many oh sorry we we uh, we need to we do need to move go. on i think we've only gone through like three calls so far in like an hour so i don't know if you is know it quantity or quality travis <laughs> well i just i i feel bad if we have a show with only five uh, calls i don't i don't know if you know this travis but when you have females on females they really like the quality of conversation these very in-depth like hey getting, yeah. i don't know if there's know you conversation. any way i can respond to bullshit. that without getting myself in trouble so optsm fan thank you so I'm much i'm gonna try anyways for calling in <laughs> thank you all so much i really appreciate it thank you Shout out to Kobe, who's in the chat right now, spamming uh, emotes. He's a proud Travis Gafford sub. Um, you should be like Kobe and also be a, tra a proud Travis Gafford.